I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. We're going to be doing a kind of a partial rebuild on this one, so not, not a full rebuild like, like maybe if you watch this channel like you've seen on some of them, but, uh, but we're gonna be doing some pretty significant um, restoration procedures and then some other, other parts that, that are more refurbishing. I like to talk about how it's kind of a hybrid rebuild, refurbish, where, where the very most crucial components we're gonna replace like the hammers and dampers, and we might do the bass strings on this one as well. The bass strings seem pretty dead. I was playing it right before this video. We'll probably do those. A handful of other parts like the shanks, um, the, um, the keys and bushings, brow straps usually, those need a lot of leather and felt and cloth throughout that needs to be replaced. A um, handful of other parts, but virtually everything else will just end up, end up refurbishing. So uh, hammer butts, for example, rather than replacing them with brand new, we'll, uh, we'll go through and it's a fairly painstaking process, just making sure that every hammer butt, uh, that, the, that the leather is, is back to how it was supposed to be when it was original, 100 years ago, 100 plus, and the, the pinning, everything pivots on a, there's a metal pin that it pivots on, so we'll take those old pins out um, and then Kind of freshen up the felt that it rotates on put in a new a new pin so that the friction is correct this is a hallett davis piano which we actually sell brand new hallett davis pianos so it's kind of fun to see one of the originals even if it is very very old and in rough condition this is a common thing that uh, that when when these old pianos um, get uh, when the, these tuning pins lose their torque, a lot of technicians, as they're tuning, they'll mark with chalk. That's what that is, just chalk. The tuning pins that no longer are holding properly. You need to have a good amount of torque, not so much that, that you break the pin, and that can happen, but not so little that, uh, that it won't hold, which is the case with those, I'm sure, with those chalked tuning pins. So here's what I was talking about with uh, the bass strings just sounding awful. more or less chromatic um, but uh, but their tone is awful and so so when they're when they're brand new they'll sound much better let's get actually better. These hammers, looks like, yeah, we're gonna be replacing these hammers for sure. And these dampers, these are small little dampers, which just really needs to be replaced. particularly bright, abrasive tone is, is a result of the, of the hammers. So that'll make a big difference. And the hammers up here, they're just totally worn. You can see the core of that hammer there, the wood core. There's no more felt left at the top. So when that, that top note, like the top several strikes, it's actually striking wood instead of felt which is not a nice tone. So replacing the hammers on this one will be, will be very nice. Keys, check out those keys. I can't remember, I'll have to check my notes or, or talk to, 
talk to the people who we're doing this for, what we're going to do about these keys. These, these are ivory original, but uh, there's a lot about them that I don't particularly care for. It looks like they've had some work done, which is very common. I don't like a lot of these seams. Things were glued on, a little bit crooked. Do you see that note there is kind of askew that direction as opposed to having been glued straight on. I mean, we can we can work with that. We can fix it, either pop it off or and re-glue it or, I don't know, file it again. Got some chips. And I don't like the discoloration, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess it really, if they really wanna keep the ivory, then we can work with this. We can make this look a whole lot better. When we sand it down, it makes a big difference with color. It brings things back more to consistent, unlike this that is so inconsistent. Some are really yellow, some are, some are only less yellow. Um, so, whereas, whereas replacing them, it, yeah, it's kind of a shame to lose the ivory, but uh, at, least it, at least it looks perfect. So, I'm usually torn on those. So it really just depends on what their preference is. Right, let's check down here. We're not we're not taking all the strings off. But we will take the base strings off and be certain. So unfortunately some of these Lewis, don't play right now. So unfortunately some of these uh, cracks we, we won't be able to get to these. But that's okay. We can there's there's quite a few cracks in there, but it'll it'll still sound good. At least we'll and I'll show you in a second in the back of the piano what we'll do to the ribs to ensure that in spite of those cracks the ribs are nice and solid. We'll replate these so those will be beautiful. And clean everything up. The uh, base bridge here actually looks pretty solid. to be clean but then I don't see I don't see issues with cracking or anything like that so the tenor section bridge there looks good and the bridge up here also looks good I don't see any cracking let's go around the back sometimes Sometimes what you get with these older pianos is along the crack. I don't see any separation. So for example, come over here. So for example, sometimes along this crack where that crack goes under the rib, this is the rib, the part that's perpendicular to the orientation of the, of the soundboard material there. Um, sometimes if I push on that, which I'm pushing pretty hard. There'll be some separation that it'll it'll the glue will will not be holding. But I think I think we're good. I don't see any separation, not even a little bit on any of those. Let's see if I can find an example. Not that I want to see separation of the soundboard. These are pretty good. Yeah, whatever glue batch those guys made up a hundred years ago seems to be holding pretty strong. I'm just not seeing any separation at all. So this is this is a, a great case. A lot of people talk about how if a soundboard is cracked or that piano is just toast but it, it, it just really isn't i think what people are referring to is if the cracks are bad enough they can develop into um they can cause that 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 degluing of the ribs to the soundboard and then you have buzzes it sounds like a, a bad loudspeaker it sounds really just absolutely awful um but uh, this is a perfect example of, of a piano that has quite a few cracks but these, as far as as far as having having that buzzing, bad loudspeaker effect, this piano is gonna 
have no, none of that, none of those issues. So it'll it'll be it'll be a good it'll be a good transformation even without doing a ton of work on soundboard, which which is not is not in the scope of this project for 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 these people anyway. So that's that's just fine. Sometimes pianos. simply aren't a good candidate for doing this level of service. The, what I was talking about at the beginning of this video, the, the, the hybrid rebuild refurbish, where some things are rebuilt and some are refurbished, they, people, they, they just, these pianos just have to be totally rebuilt. It's kind of an all or nothing thing, but this, this piano is actually a pretty good candidate for, for doing the, the hybrid. Um, so be a dramatic improvement.